Let's go back to the coronavirus situation now. ABC analyst Casey Briggs joins us. Uh, good morning, Casey. So another 2,000 cases in Victoria. In fact, the number dipped slightly, but that figure is expected to rise, isn't it? Yeah, I think we'll see numbers, whether or not they rise or whether they sort of hover in the, the, the sort of 2000s as they are at the moment. I think um, we're not at all surprised to see this number repeated uh, today because what we learned yesterday was not just that there was a very big one day spike in cases, but also uh, that most of the cases, uh, you know, more than 1,245 households had recorded new uh, coronavirus infections and, and they've been kind of the, the virus have been introduced to those households and that means there's a lot of unfortunately household contacts who are now susceptible hopefully lots of them are vaccinated but uh, this does appear to be spreading through you know has been does appear to have been spreading through in an undetected way so potentially some chains of transmission have been missed some people have not been getting tested you know who knows exactly what uh, has happened there but that that kind of explains why it is that we're looking at a curve that sort of will see these numbers in the 2000s for uh, probably a few days at least, unfortunately. Um, I hope I'm wrong. I hope they come down soon, but you know, it wouldn't surprise me to see a few more days or a couple more days at least of this, uh, especially because when you're looking at places like you know, Monash, which had um, a big spike around the time of the AFL Grand Final long weekend and perhaps other events linked around uh, that period of time two weeks ago, um, those clusters were maybe beginning to subside a little bit and now we've uh, got another reintroduction into the community with new households infected. So um, that, that's why I'm not particularly surprised that these numbers are in the 2000s. It is another annoying frustration in Victoria's uh, battle against this curve, trying to get these numbers down because Victoria is getting very close to that 70% uh, mark and you would really hope uh, that these numbers would be decreasing by the time that uh, these vaccination figures get, you know, 62, 63% of the 16 plus population fully vaccinated already. And we're still not seeing um, uh, the impact on a population-wide scale. And it looks like what we might be having is some spread through pockets of the community, uh, spread through certain groups of the community, uh, and spread through certain areas that kind of are maybe perhaps a bit less vaccinated than others. That's, that's my guess, at least. Mm. Well, New South Wales has dipped under 400 cases. Is it races towards the 80% vaccination threshold there, Casey? Yeah, so actually while we're here, let's look at the vaccination numbers. So 77.8% of the 16 plus population fully vaccinated. If the next couple of days look like the last three days, uh, that'll be 80% before Monday. Uh, we've seen more than one percentage point growth in, um, in the last weekdays of the second dose numbers. That's far faster than first doses were going up while they were in the 70s. Uh, and so you're 2.2 percentage points away. That is two more weekdays on this week's pace. So not, would not surprise me at all. Uh, in fact, it's my, sort of my expectation at this point that Monday the 18th of October will be the day that the rules ease, which means there's not a lot of time. We've zipped straight between um, 70 and 80, you know, in, in, in a week's time. So it's not really going to be obvious exactly what the impact uh, of these 70% easings are. But 399 cases today. This case uh, curve continues to drop. The seven day average down to 452. That's an improvement uh, again. So step by step improvement down to 450 now, hopefully further down in the coming days. But now we're sort of on watch now that we're getting toward an incubation period since um, since the rules have eased, we'll be on watch to see not just if you know cases start to rise again, but also just if this slope, if the slope of this line changes, if it gets a bit more shallow, if the growth is a little bit less um, consistent in the coming days and weeks, well, that'll be a sign that there is more virus circulating because of the changed uh, rules. So that's one thing that we'll uh, watch for as we move through 70%, 80%, and really before too long, up to 90% and beyond double vaccination rates in New South Wales. The one region we'll watch uh, particularly today is the Hunter New England Local Health District because out of yesterday's 406 cases, Ros, uh, a quarter, more than a quarter of them were in the Hunter New England Health District. So that's a quarter of the caseload of the state in one uh, part that's not Greater Sydney. Uh, that is really the area that I think we watch the most closely at the moment. As you've been uh, hearing and seeing during the course of the morning, Casey, the ACT's lockdown has ended. What's happening with case numbers there? Yeah, they're actually um, increasing. So the, the ACT has managed to suppress this 
uh, this outbreak for a very long time, but there's only so long you can go with that lockdown, right? And, and when you've got vaccination rates as high as the ACT has, we had 46 cases yesterday, 51 the day before, you know, we're, we're looking at uh, a curve that's increasing and, in, you know, per capita, these cases are actually pretty high compared to some of the other outbreaks that we're seeing because, the, because Canberra's got such a small population compared to, you know, Sydney and, and Melbourne. But, um, you know, realistically, these curves are never coming down to zero again. If, the, if New South Wales got down to 50 cases a day, I think everyone would be quite happy and uh, jubilant and that would be a mark of really great success uh, because, you know, that, that's the kind of caseload that you can suppress, you know, relatively easily and you're not, it's not going to cause a massive hospitalisation rate. So the question I think will be, with uh, this curve still increasing, where does it sort of settle down in a couple of weeks' time? And are we going to see these numbers continue to grow or will there be some sort of natural stability point? Um, you know, there aren't really, you know, it's, it's, it's natural stability point caused, caused by the combination of growing vaccination rates uh, and also people sort of modifying their behaviour when they're kind of in known hotspot areas. So that'll be one thing that we'll watch as well. But yeah, interestingly, we have uh, an outbreak growing and it's restrictions easing. I'm not criticising that, but it's not, you know, what we would have expected to be doing even a few months ago. Uh, when we're used to using these lockdowns to get down to zero, this just shows how much the strategy has changed. Casey, thank you.